and you know we've we felt like we've been able to recruit at a pretty high level the last couple of years and that's going to need to continue uh, you know recruiting's really is forever changed uh, with NIL and the transfer portal and uh, so far we've been able to adjust to that relatively well and I think the the run in the NCAA tournament certainly helps. Um, but, you know, what it does for this team, you know, we were, we were really, really close. And the motivation that that provides to try to get back to that situation and have an opportunity to try to do it again is, I think, what keeps these older, this older core really working hard. What stands out about the non-con? Uh, you know, I think, it's, again, it's got a good mix, uh, you know, of some, some challenging games. Uh, you know, certainly the, the Big Ten challenge with Iowa will be great for our fans. Uh, the home and home we're starting with Alabama will be a really competitive game. I think the game at UNLV is probably, uh, probably one that people might sleep on until it actually happens. I think they've got a really good team. And, uh, you know, Kevin Kruger's done a really good job there in a short period of time of assembling uh, a really good roster. Um, and then I think the tournament. Uh, in Kansas City, it'll be, be great for our fans. It's the day before Thanksgiving and uh, Thanksgiving Day, and then the Nebraska game's always a, always a great game for our fans in state. So it's got, uh, like last year's schedule, if you're able to have some success, uh, it, it can pay dividends down the road. Uh, but also, we played such a good schedule last year that I think we got rewarded for that. If you look at our seating in the NCAA tournament, based on where it was projected to be seated, I think we were probably a seed line or two higher than a lot of people thought. And I think that's because we chose to play a really competitive schedule. I know you and Nate are good friends with the Alabama game come together and how you feel about where it is. Yeah, Co Coach Oates and I have known each other for 15 plus years. I've re recruited a couple of his players when he was coaching at Romulus High School in Detroit. Uh, so we've talked about it and, uh, you know, excited for that opportunity. Obviously, they're one of the best teams in the country a year ago. and. They've really killed it in the transfer portal as well, so he'll have a, a really good team that'll bring here and it'll be a talk about an entertaining game. You know, they play really fast paced, shoot a lot of threes, much like we do, so I think it'll be a, a fun game for fun game for our fans and a good test for us right before we begin Big East play. You know, we had to give them some time off. That's um, that's a very wearing process, not just physically but mentally. Uh, so they took two, two and a half weeks off, and now they're kind of getting back into the flow. Uh, but obviously, I think there's a confidence that comes from being going through that process, understanding the feedback that was really positive, and at the same time, understanding what people have said they have to work on to get a little bit better, and they've both taken that to heart. How important is it for King to take a step forward this year and help relieve Paul Fred or some more? Yeah, I'd like to get Fred out there more this year, and, and hopefully, you know, going through it as a freshman, having to play some important minutes, uh, when, when Ryan was, was sick. Um, and then this experience this summer, I think is even going to prepare him more for what we hope is going to be a really good year this year for Fred King. Does it help to have these 10 practices you know, compared to an off season where you don't have them? We're, we're, it's just a huge head start. Um, a lot of the fundamental teaching, uh, a lot of the terminology that's new uh, for, the, for the guys that are new to our program. Uh, usually that process takes place the first two weeks of practice and hopefully we have that behind us and it allows us to move a little bit faster once we start practice in late September. Coach Kellogg, is it the addition to your staff, what, what does he bring to the table besides maybe opening different recruiting doors? Yeah, he's, he's number one, as you mentioned, he's been great recruiting. He knows so many people from his time in the business, but you know, he played point guard on a really successful college team at UMass with Marcus Camby. He's got a great understanding of the game. Uh, and you, we've been able to see that uh, on the practice floor. So, you know, we lost a really good piece to our staff and Coach Huss, uh, but, you know, very happy for him and his opportunity at High Point. And we were fortunate to be able to find someone that's as high quality of coach and individual as Derek is. Um, deep runs in March Madness being able to help with transfers. Do you think that that's especially true for some of the guys who transferred and who played high school ball in Nebraska as well? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Isaac was a guy we recruited the first time and probably finished second. Jonathan Lawson was a guy we recruited the first time, probably finished second in his recruitment. So I think that I think that helps. Um, and obviously, being from the state of Nebraska, in Isaac's case, he's familiar with you know the success that we've had and the style of play that we have. So we don't we didn't really need to explain that to him this time around.
that, that four spot is kind of three guys, four guys? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Mason, Isaac, Jason Green, they've all had moments where they've been really good. You know, I think Mason and Jason maybe could slide to the three a little bit. Isaac at some point probably could slide to the five uh, in a perimeter, you know, five guard situation. So they give us some flexibility, but it's, it's going to be a very competitive position. If anybody surprised me, I think we've we kind of knew what was coming uh, with who we recruited, and I think they've they've lived up to our expectations, uh, especially especially with their work ethic and their desire to improve. And uh, really, to a man, they've done that. Yeah, I mean, it's been great. I think uh, with the trip to the Bahamas coming up in August, these have actually been able to be more like real practices. And so, typically, a summer workout isn't as intense as, as days like today, but it's so fun being in the gym with the guys and being able to play up and down so much and get familiar with how they play, how I play coming in, how we can just gel together. Super welcoming. I mean, um, from the time I stepped foot on campus, uh, it was an off period, but Baylor was still in town, Trey was still in town. I got to work out with them from the very jump. And so, you know, it really is a family and that's what the coaching staff and Coach Mack emphasized about the opportunity to come and play here. And it's been exactly that. Yeah, I mean, it's been awesome. It's uh, definitely something that's difficult and something that I've had to adjust to, especially being in a program for three years um, and loving my time there. It's, it's an adjustment, and I think it's uh, maybe even a little bit more of an adjustment than I would, would have thought, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's, it's only July, you know, so we, we still have a lot of time before we really have to be in the, in the type of caliber and the form that we want to be, and so we'll learn those nuances and, and figure it out as we go. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, just the just how big Creighton is in the community is something that I'd kind of understood, but at the same time, just seeing everybody support, driving through different neighborhoods, seeing Creighton flags everywhere, um, you know, it means a lot, and it's a, a type of environment that it's super fun to be a part of, and so that's probably one of the things that I've noticed the most. How has the adjustment to just Omaha in general been for you? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, you know, me and my wife, we've been married two years, and so not many transfers are bringing their, their spouses with them, and so that's something that's new, but the coaching staff were great at understanding that and how that may be different than some circumstances, and so we've adjusted really well and found a great spot to live, and we love the, love the environment and the culture here in Omaha. Yeah, I mean, the, the coaches are very trustworthy to us as players, and they hold us accountable with that trust, and that's the things that you know, I've always loved as a player. I feel like um, being undersized and smaller, I've always had to work for what I've got. And the coaches have been great about rewarding those types of players that, that put in the work, play with freedom. Um, you know, you saw it today at practice, just how free we play and how much fun we have running up and down. And so the style of coaching and playing is exactly where I want it to be. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if the radar is six feet and above, I'm, I'm certainly right there at it. And so as a player, I think that I, I have a little chip on my shoulder and, um, and I've loved that. And coming into this uh, environment, you know, there are some more expectations than I've ever, ever had in my career. And so um, exceeding those is something that is one of my goals. And, and so as an under the radar player, you always have to, you know, kind of play with that chip on your shoulder because nothing's going to be given to you. And, when we're playing basketball at the highest level, you recognize day in and day out how talented each and every guy is in here. And so it's just fun competing against guys like that. Yeah, I mean, I was super excited. Uh, a lot of manifestations up into the universe for that to happen. You know, I was, I was trying to just speak it into existence because I know how important they were going to be for, for us this year. And, you know, we have so many guys this year. I think this team, watching last year's team quite a bit, I think we even have more depth than we had last year, and that's going to bode well for us, I think. But those two are huge, and I think the way that Trey can uh, navigate the ball screen and get in the lane and finish in the lane, whether it be a mid-range pull-up or at the rim, um, you know, is actually unlike anything I've played with before. And then, you know, the ability for, for Kalk to go up and get 
offensive rebounds, putbacks, and just the flip up or the lob is always there, it feels like. And so to have that in pick and roll, I think has just elevated my game, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I've had a, you know, a few good talks with Coach Mack about that actually is that, you know, it's no secret that he was great for, for Creighton for two years and uh, he made his decision. But at the same time, Coach Mack recruited me to come and be Stephen Ashworth and, and that's exactly who I plan to be. I don't plan to be anybody else. And I think that um, this team can be something special when every single player is themselves. Um, and so I think that's the main focus as we're coming through these workouts this summer is that figuring out how we all like to play and then playing the way that we all like to play. We don't need to be anybody else. I think, uh, you know, if we're Creighton, it's going to be tough to beat Creighton. You mentioned one of the things you was about the play style fits your game. There's going to be a lot of three-pointers going up today. How do you feel that especially melds with your game? Yeah, I mean, just from a, you know, points per possession, effective field goal, all of that stuff, the three-pointer obviously is my strong suit. Um, and being a point guard and a facilitator, uh, I like to be able to think that I can play make and hit the three and be a great shooter and uh, you know it's been a lot of fun being able to play on and off the ball with me and Trey handling it and so I think that just the style uh, is a lot of fun and it gives me a lot of opportunities to succeed and, and that's what you want as a player. You want team success and you want to be playing at the highest level but you also want to be in a situation and an environment where you feel like you can be successful and that is exactly what it's been so far for me. Yeah. What, what do you think about his talent at his age and um, kind of beyond his years, does he not? No, yeah. Josiah is definitely a very skilled player, understands, very cerebral. And he is, I would probably say, wise beyond his years. And, uh, you know, he was player of the year coming in. And so I think that just the, the element and the caliber of player he is is the type of players that Creighton is going to get in the future, which is going to be, you know, something very special. And so, you know, I'm excited to – in a way, be be a little mentor to him, you know, with a, what it maybe six or seven years older, not, nah. <laughs> but uh, you know, try to at least share with him what I've seen, what I've learned, and uh, you know, he's picked up things so quick and has played really well so far. So it's been fun to watch and play with him. How, how uh, difficult has the transition been? It seems like you you blended in very nicely. Yeah, um, I mean, it was definitely. I'd say the first week was real tough. Uh, you know, stepping into a program like Creighton that's, you know, has real high expectations. Uh, the pace is a lot faster. The physicality of the game is a lot different, even just college basketball in general. And so uh, the first week was real difficult for me, but I feel because uh, we have such a great coaching staff and, and you know, great teammates to help me uh, along the way, I feel like I've been able to kind of uh, find my spots and I'm going to keep learning through this whole summer and through the whole next year. So. Oh uh, yeah, Steven's a great leader. Uh, I mean, I definitely look at him every single practice to see you know, what I can learn from and, and what I can do to help contribute to the team. Uh, and even off the court, I definitely ask him lots of questions and he's super willing to give me answers and give me feedback to help me grow. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Coach Mack is you know, as good as it gets. And he's an amazing coach, one reason why I chose to go here. And, uh, you know, every day Coach Matt comes with the same intensity and same expectations. And so, you know, me just learning from, from that to come to practice, no matter how I feel with the same level of energy, uh, it's just going to help me in the long run, and he's going to keep pushing me to be better. Talent level aside, obviously, but what's the biggest difference between going to the West and then coming to practice here? Yeah, I mean, I just say the intensity level. Uh, college basketball players, they want to win every single drill, every single workout. And so when you step on the floor with all these different players, uh, it's not just the coaches pushing you, but it's the players pushing you. And I'd say that's a, a big jump from high school. Is it, do you have to remind yourself it's July? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like. Yeah. What is this the next month going to mean for you, though, as a development as a player? It's kind of nice to get some games on your belt before the school year starts. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big month for me and, and a big just summer for me of, of learning and then uh, you know, seeing what I can do and seeing what I can uh, prove to the coaches. And, you know, I'm excited to, to show what I can do, um, and I hope I can be a big impact to the team. Confidence has never been an issue with you, but you've got to be some kind of self-doubt when you walk into a college situation. How much 
confident, how much more confident are you now than maybe three, two, three, four weeks ago? Yeah, I mean, I'm 100% more confident. I feel like uh, I definitely came into college basketball with a, a confident mindset, you know, coming in, don't, uh, you know, let these big dudes push on you. And I felt like I was able to do that. But now that I've seen how practices run and how, you know, everything uh, flows, um, I'm definitely a step uh, better than I was just a few weeks ago. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, me coming in as a freshman um, in high school at Bellevue West, there was seven seniors or eight seniors on our team. And so it was a lot of uh, a lot of older guys, and I feel almost the same way coming in here at Creighton. You have people who are experienced with the, the level of basketball, um, you know, just playing collegiately. And so uh, me coming in, you know, I'm just trying to uh, do what I did as a freshman, play with confidence coming in, but also learn more than I did my freshman year of high school. I'd say me coming in this year, um, I'm trying to just soak up as much as I can so that I can, you know, uh, improve and then contribute to the team. And talk about your Belmont experience. You had a lot of deep runs in the state tournament, a lot of high-intensity games. How do you think that experience has shaped you heading into uh, a situation like this where the intensity is going to ratchet up even another level? Yeah, I'd say even the competition uh, in high school basketball, my four years of high school at Bellevue West, uh, just helped me develop as a player. We had you know, some real tough battles all four years, especially in the state tournament, uh, against some great players that are playing collegiately right now. And I'd say um, me being able to just have experience with that has definitely pushed me and allowed me to, you know, get more comfortable playing against the physicality and, and the athleticism here in, in, at Creighton. So how special was the race to $1,000 Oh yeah, I mean, when I got that phone call, I was just overjoyed. Uh, you know, I love my city and I want to do whatever I can to help improve and, and you know, me being from North Omaha, uh, just being able to give back uh, to the place where I grew up, it was just a huge blessing and I was so excited. Yeah. So uh, basically when we won the Gatorade Player of the Year, they sent out a little uh, tweet. They said if you write your name down, you can get automatically uh, $1,000 to a charity. So I did that, got them 1000 and then it was like they asked if you want, it's optional, you can create a little video or a little thing to um, choose whatever charity you want and uh, you'll get awarded $10,000, but only one out of the 50 states will get it. And so uh, me, my parents, and my girlfriend actually designed the video you know we took some shots of some community service of me in, in the abide gym and, and the abide communities and kind of just put together what my heart was for the city and um, we were lucky enough to get chosen <laughs> nah, J Jason's my guy I feel like we joke about it a lot I mean I've even brought it up to him how you know, sometimes in the two years that he beat us, you know, they, they got a little a leeway with the refs. And, you know, we, we joke about it, but, but he's a great dude, and, and we're great teammates off the court and on the court. So. And there's now not only you and Jason, but also Josh Townley Thomas, all three of you that played mm -hmm. high school basketball here in Omaha, grew up watching Creighton. What does it mean to you guys to be able to, like, follow in the footsteps of guys like Doug McDermott, Justin Patton, all those guys who have had success in that? Yeah, I feel... Omaha is just a, such a tight-knit community, and, and everyone's for each other. So, like me, Josh, and Jason all played at different high schools, and we were all competitors against each other. Um, but getting to play here at Creighton, you know, we all feel the same. We get to represent our city, and uh, it's definitely a huge blessing. What's it like being a ball boy for a team, and then years later being <laughs> No, I, I, I thought about that a few times. I remember mopping the floor for, for Doug, and... And even sometimes Doug will come back and he says he remembers me, you know, being little. And, and it's kind of funny how it goes back full circle. Um, I don't know if I ever imagined that it would go back full circle like this, but it's definitely crazy because you just see how big the players are and now we're on the court with them. So it's definitely crazy. When, when does the, the bet come with your brother on who's going to have a better college career? <laughs> I don't know if it's a bet, but... <laughs> You might have to talk to him about that one. <laughs>